first ever live diamond download. I don't know if people can see us or hear us or anything, man, but I think this is gonna be great. How are you doing today? Dude, I'm stoked. Um, so confirming we're we're live on Twitter. Um, let me check LinkedIn. This is this is gonna be fun though. I'm doing well, man. I'm pumped that we're finally doing this live. I know that we do this every Tuesday myself and yourself, but here we are. We're live on um we're live on LinkedIn. Heck yeah. Cool. Monday? What's that? Are you doing well? Dude, I had um I had a bunch of my students down in Miami for the weekend. I told you about Copy Olympics, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I had all like the winning team, Team Bo, come down. And dude, we had so much fun. It was like a, an amazing weekend. Dude, heck yeah. I'm so yeah. glad. Oh, like, people can actually comment. We just got a comment from um from YouTube. We just got a comment from LinkedIn. This is sick. Oh, oh sure. there we go. Okay. Dude, this is sick. Sorry, guys. We're just figuring out this tech. This is the first time we ever are doing a, a live podcast. How's everyone doing today? Where's everyone based? We got Felix. We got Sadia. Dude, this is yeah, this Felix. Cool. Um, all right. Well, I I really want to make sure that we deliver a lot of. Um, no way. I was just watching Carnal on another channel. Sweet. <laughs> Dude, it's amazing. All right. Well, I really want to make sure we deliver value, and that's what we're here for. So. Why don't we kick this off? And at the end, um, I, I'm good for a bit. So why don't, at the end, let's take some questions. We're, we're going to answer some questions at the end. So post those up now or, or at the end. And uh, Mason, let's, let's get this started. Cool. Run it. Let's tee it up. So Chase and I have both been on social media for four years now, four and a half years. And um, I, we've learned a thing or two about growth on social media. And we've also you know seen the fruit of its labor or the fruit of our labor, I guess. Um, we both had, you know, some success in in monetizing our audiences with various different things. Like you've had a couple courses that have done really well. You obviously like have grown your agency to multi seven, almost eight figures with social media. I think um, this is something that more people should be paying attention to. I know that a lot of people are paying attention to building an or uh, building an audience on social media, but um we're gonna spit some game man i think it's gonna be really good heck yeah great intro let's let's do this so um kind of the focus for today we're going to talk about is i guess quote unquote more written platforms and when we when we say that we mean predominantly linkedin and twitter those are really kind of going to be the two focuses today um you know mason's done really really well on instagram and tiktok and youtube so maybe that's for a future time but today we're going to talk about linkedin and twitter and one kind of um interesting observation that i've noticed kind of doing both is I found that the right Twitter content can actually perform really, really well on LinkedIn, but the right LinkedIn content doesn't actually perform that well on Twitter. So we're going to kind of talk about some content today and distribution. You know, the really the two things that you guys need to do well on both LinkedIn and Twitter is the right content, the right frequency of content, and ensuring that people actually see your content. So that's going to be kind of the, the topic and the overview of what we're going through today. Uh, Mason, anything you want to kind of mention before we dive in? Yeah, I think it's important that people understand, like, when you're trying to pick any platform to grow on, you always have to understand what sort of like the fundamental, like, basis of the platform is. So like the reason LinkedIn stuff probably doesn't do well on Twitter um, is because like, if you understand that Twitter is kind of for entertainment, and like just firing dopamine at you and LinkedIn is really people have a purpose on there, like people engage with stuff. People are trying to network. People are trying to like, you know, find opportunities to like make money, get jobs and stuff like that. I think as long as you have that in mind, growth on any platform is going to be easy. Like, you know, that Instagram, same sort of thing, get entertained. And if you understand how people scroll, same sort of thing, how people watch YouTube videos or TikTok or whatever. Um, I think before anything, thinking like a user is going to help you a ton. Like that was how I did well on Twitter. And I think if, if you sort of go at it from that mindset instead of like, how can I just be a creator? Think like a user first. That's like how the best marketers kind of do what they do. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one thing to double down on actually, um, as you're talking about, I was thinking about this too. Even myself as a user, as a consumer, I, I'm in a different mindset. I think that's kind of what you're getting at. Like I'm on a different mindset when I'm on different platforms. When I'm on Twitter, you know, I'm looking for, yeah, entertainment or I'm looking for certain types of, you know, news or sports or whatever it might be. When I'm on LinkedIn, I'm really looking more to learn and connect and kind of further my career. Um, when I'm on YouTube, right, maybe I'm listening to music, um, maybe I'm watching some kind of thing to learn, but I'm really there to be uh, kind of entertained and sometimes educated. So I think really too, like 
when you think about the platform that you're on and how people actually consume content, that is really important to actually how you create. So I think that was a, a great tip. Um, and, and with that, uh, let's, let's kind of talk about like the content formats, um, right? So you have to consume content. I'm sure at this point, most people are consumers. Um, it seems like only like a few percentage of people actually are creating content, which is really where all the magic happens. Um, in, in terms of, I'm going to focus on LinkedIn right now. And then Mason's going to kind of talk about Twitter. We'll kind of go back and forth on the two, um, in terms of LinkedIn, there's kind of six primary content formats. And again, on, on LinkedIn plus Twitter content plus distribution, that's the focus, but there's six primary formats. Um, there's text only there's text plus image there's text plus video um, there's documents which are aka carousels um right so it's almost like a pdf of images uh there's polls and there's a newsletter so those are the formats right so i also think too like when you think about content mason do you ever think about it in terms of the format in which you're producing like i guess for you like TikTok's a video right but maybe a better mm -hmm. example is on twitter or instagram that you can do a photo you can do a video you can do kind of text like do you ever think about the actual content type as you're creating content or you just think about the content and then reverse engineer to the type? I, I think so. Yeah. It's always, you start with the message you want to get across and then you think about the best possible way to deliver that message. Um, I think one thing that's cool about Twitter is like, you don't have to use images or videos. I think that the best sort of tweeters, are the ones that can that are really visual in the way that they write like it all comes down to you know being able to write really well that's why these platforms are so cool is because like it rewards good writing um but i've seen people really crush it with like different styles i've seen people never you know use a single picture and they're and they're just fine i know some creators on twitter that um like the their content wouldn't do well without the images where like they'll have like a motivational message and then have pictures that are sort of aesthetic or like lifestyle based to help push it forward. And then there are people that don't actually use like text on Twitter at all and just have like a, an image of like an article basically that they've written. And that's basically their version of a tweet, except it's really long. Like they can put like, you know, 200 words in a thing that people can just read and consume. So I think as you start, you're going to have to try and find your style. Um, and just kind of try everything until you see like one of your posts is going to do really well. And then like rule number one on social media is when you see one thing doing well, triple down on it forever. Yeah, dude, hundred percent. And, and for me, like that format that I keep coming back to on both Twitter and LinkedIn is text plus image. Um, you know, I've done just text and I think I'm a decent writer, but I feel like what I do an image alongside text, that's really kind of where the magic happens. And I think like you're optimizing for different things on different platforms, but there's crossover. So when I post on Twitter, um, my kind of call to action at the end of the post is trying to get people to bookmark it. It feels like to me on Twitter, if you can get people to bookmark it, and I think if they're able to bookmark it, they'll probably also potentially like it. Um, and maybe comment on as well, comment and reposting on Twitter, retweeting on Twitter um, takes a little bit more effort. But my goal on basically Twitter is to try to get people to bookmark it. And I found that that really helps push things into the feed. And, and I'm basically creating highly visual content. And I think this is super important on LinkedIn as well. I think the highly visual content is what's winning. And my favorite formats are things like infographics, tables, charts, just really clear and easy ways to share a massive amount of information in a really digestible format that's highly shareable. So for me, it's text plus image. And Mason, I think actually for you, I know we've been talking a lot about LinkedIn and getting you on there. I think over the next six to 12 months on LinkedIn, I think video is going to be king. Um, I'm kind of starting mm -hmm. to see some signs. Like I had a video the other day, get like a quarter of a million impressions. I had a video the other day, do about a hundred thousand impressions. Um, so it's kind of starting to go head to head a little bit with my text plus image content. So I think for folks like yourself that are creating on YouTube or creating on Instagram or creating on TikTok, I really think taking some of that best content from those platforms that's already been tested um, and bring that over to the likes of Twitter and LinkedIn, I think is a great opportunity and a great move. Yeah, I think I think that piggybacks off of like what you were talking about, where it's kind of like knowing your metrics, like knowing your KPIs. So you're talking about bookmarks, right? So specifically for Twitter, they care a lot about bookmarks because it's like your content is keeping them on the platform. And with video, they're kind of borrowing from YouTube. The reason video is probably doing well on LinkedIn is because the purpose is, again, to keep people on the platform. If you have like a five minute video that people are going to watch and they watch like the whole thing, 
you just kept someone watching your content for five minutes when someone could have a text post and you know, it's, you know, 10 lines long and it's really good and it's inspirational, but people only spend, you know, 25 seconds reading it. LinkedIn thinks that your stuff is way better than that guy's stuff, even though you might've taken the exact same thing and just put it in a video. I think it's also the same when you have your, um, your infographics, because I've seen those on Twitter and they're like, they're very, you know, long and, and complex and it takes a minute to read. So I'm on your tweet for like a minute and a half reading this thing. And that's a signal to the platform that, you know, people like your stuff. That's a good thing. People aren't going to, they're not going to push content. That's not, you know, bingeable that people are going to spend a lot of time on. So, um, but I, I, yeah, I fully agree. Yeah. So on, on Twitter, uh, it's a bookmarks and on LinkedIn, the thing that I'm trying to optimize for is my theory on LinkedIn. And maybe this is a theory across all platforms that makes sense is the more friction it has a user take, the more friction required for a user to engage. Um, the more you're going to be rewarded and, you know, liking on LinkedIn is pretty passive. Whereas if you leave a comment or you actually hit repost and if you want to repost with their thoughts in my mind, right? Like the harder it is to do, that's the most amount of effort for someone to actually leave a comment and to write something or for someone to actually click repost, which is basically in a sense, people almost, um, basically saying, Hey, I'm raising my hand and I really like this content enough that I'm going to share it on my own space, on my own wall, on my own timeline. So that's kind of what I'm optimizing for on LinkedIn. It's trying to get people to comment and, and repost it. So I think like knowing kind of this certain, I guess, almost tricks of each platform. And it's really just knowing like the things that the platforms are looking for, the algorithms are looking for that keep people engaged and basically say, hey, this is the content that's good. So with Google, right back in SEO and back in the day, it used to be backlinks. With YouTube and TikTok and Instagram and these videos, it's right. Like how many times do people watch it? How many times do they pause and rewind? Like how many times, how much time do they spend on it? Right. So each platform kind of has their own subtle kind of intricacies on like what they favor. Um, and, and I guess like my best thing to do is go take all of your previous tweets, all of your previous posts, all of your previous videos, um, and get someone to build a graphic out of it. So my process right now is I think like a writer, right? Like writing is very natural and easy to me. What I'll typically do is I'll write a piece of content. I'll post it and if the post does well, I'll go pay a graphic designer, you know, 25, 50, 75 dollars, whatever it might be to turn the, the written content into a visual. And then I'll repost that content with the text plus the image, you know, three, six, 12 months later, like I can't even remember what I had for breakfast this morning. So the, I think a lot of people are concerned about like, oh, someone might remember that I posted this in the past. I'm basically refreshing and taking the content I posted in the past and putting kind of like a new spin on it. So that's kind of how I'm going about some of the content creation. Some of it's completely net new. And then some of it's basically repurposing my old content, but in a new form, I might take a tweet that was written and I might make a video about it and throw it on Instagram reels. I might take an old tweet in the past or an old LinkedIn post in the past that was text only that maybe did well, but could have done better. And I'll, I'll slap an image to it. That's kind of how I think about it. Dude, that's such a huge thing that people don't understand because as a consumer, you don't notice this because you just see new content all the time. You just see like, you're just scrolling through your timeline and seeing all this stuff you haven't seen before and you're interacting with some of it or whatever, but content creators who are posting a, a ton of volume, they have like successful hooks, successful bodies, successful ideas that they kind of swap around each other. Like you can have one hook that does really well and have, you know, use it three or four times a month with a different, you know, idea or a different body and it can do as well every single time. Or you have like one really good idea, one really good body, and you just try rehooking it where even if it didn't perform before, it performs now with a new hook. And like a lot of content is really Frankenstein together. Like it really doesn't have to be like a new fresh idea every single time. Um, it works across platforms where it's like, yeah, you take a tweet and put it on reels, or you take a, a reel and put it on TikTok or make a TikTok and make it a long YouTube video. All of that stuff works. And um, yeah, man, you really can recycle the same stuff. And a lot of people um, hear that and think it's a little bit tacky where it's like, well, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to just like tweet for growth. Like I want to you know, give people solid information. It's like, well, if it, if it goes viral every time, it means that everyone's missing the information in the first place. Like you can have something get a thousand likes on Twitter, but um, still like 90% of your audience didn't see it. You do it again and then again and again, new people are going to see it all the time. It's new to somebody. So there's nothing wrong with, with repurposing content like that. Yeah, dude, 100%. And, and one thing I want to kind of focus on too is like, 
just to really kind of drive home like the content piece, right? Like uh, again, content plus distribution, content plus distribution. I really want to make sure everyone understands that, but really to drive home the content piece. Um, and, and this is specific to LinkedIn, I think potentially, you know, applicable to other platforms, but um, I think there's three types of primary posts that people need to be creating. And I'm going to kind of list them right now and then I'll dive into each one. Um, the three types of posts that people need to be creating is broad content, authoritative content, and promotional content. So starting with broad content, what's broad content? So really when I think about broad content, um, that's like the synonymous with like how I think about like viral content, um, but, but viral within a niche. You don't want to go so broad that it's like a platitude that, you know, anyone in the world could get. You want to go broad in the sense that you can drive views, engagements, and followers, but it also should be related to your industry, but wider than you typically talk about. So, so for me, early in my career, all I ever talked about when I first joined social media was e-commerce email marketing. And I really kind of built my name and my authority around e-commerce email marketing. And it got to a point where I probably reached the threshold of how many people cared about e-commerce email marketing. I had probably most of them, not all of them, but a lot of them. Um, and I wanted to keep growing and kind of keep talking about the same topics, but expand. So I started talking about things like general email marketing, right? Everyone in the world should be doing email marketing. And obviously not everyone cares about it. So that filters some people out. I started talking about business and entrepreneurship and kind of my journey. I started talking about copywriting. So everyone should be take, taking kind of their content and creating broader versions of it to be able to reach more people. Um, and you know, what does this look like, right? Personal stories, funny moments, memes, trending news, um, and tips and advice that can apply to a large audience within your um, topic. And, and then kind of, you know, two examples of that that I've done um, as I shared a post before about like all the businesses that I failed at, kind of how I failed and some of the learnings, right? And I think that is really relatable where we all have entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial thoughts um, and we've all failed. And, you know, sometimes people look at people and they're like, oh, they've only ever been successful. They've never failed. So just like humanizing yourself and kind of talking about some of the, the L's you've taken, some of the failures, that was like a really good post for me. And then the other was taking kind of like an old school Porsche ad and kind of just sharing like some of the learnings and things from that. So that's kind of like the broad post. Uh, Mace, any questions that make sense? Anything to add kind of on that type of content? Yeah, I, I really don't think people should underestimate um, like how important it is to not just talk about like the stuff. You're, so email marketing, right? You can't just talk about email marketing or just copywriting because you turn into a theme page. Like I was, I had something written down where it's like you become a human theme page. There's a lot of people like this on Twitter that are just like the worst people to follow ever. And no one really genuinely cares about them because no one knows anything about them. They've never sort of shown any likable qualities. They've never shown their personality. You have to talk more th about or more than just the stuff you usually tweet about. Um, like, yeah, share your fail failures, share like personal wins, stuff that's like outside of business or like tell jokes or like, you know, talk about whatever happened last night. That's so important to do or else you just become, you know, like someone could just completely clone your thing and there's no moat. Like the personality is the moat. Yes. And that's kind of like an unfortunate thing about a lot of people's, you know, social media journey is like they, they build an audience, but they don't really, you know what I mean? Because they don't have enough personality in their content. You, Chase, you have a family, you love golf, you have a ton of experience in business, you have a lot of like lessons to share. You could lose all your followers today and grow it back, you know, fairly quickly because people would be like, oh, is that Chase guy? And they'd follow you again. But, you know, not everybody gets that same privilege because they're not sharing the the personal stuff. Yeah. And when I think about like your channels, like when I think about um, I, when I think about like your Twitter, your YouTube and your Instagram, like let's use those examples. I think on Twitter, um, you do a really good job. Like you don't actually do any selling on Twitter. You do a really good job on um, on Twitter in terms of like sharing just like what you're thinking and kind of, you know, what you're up to and kind of some advice. So I feel like on Twitter, you have like a really nice balance of like personality, lifestyle and teaching. Um, whereas on YouTube, I think like you're really going hard on more of like the teaching, but like you're, it's done in a way where, you know, you have a personality and you're funny and you're really entertaining. And I think like Instagram is probably like the best of both worlds for you, where I feel like you use like your actual in kind of feed post, like kind of like your, your normal post um, to kind of teach and educate and entertain. And then I feel like you use your story to really show the lifestyle and the personality, right? So, you know, I think like you kind of have across different channels, different strategies that show a whole lot of your personality. Um, you know, some of your personality, but a little bit more professional kind of in the sense of YouTube. 
Um, and then I think it's kind of the same for me, right? Like I think on Twitter, um, I share a lot of tips and tricks, but a lot of it is to like just random thoughts and random advice on things I'm learning or things I'm witnessing. You know, on Instagram, you know, some of it's families, a lot of it's uh, business. And on LinkedIn, most of it's kind of business, entrepreneurship, learning. So I also think too, depending on the context of the platform, you can be a little bit more free flowing in terms of your personality versus kind of the value. Another thing that I like what you do is you like, okay, remember when you were in school and like your teacher's teaching, right? But sometimes the teacher, like they're kind of just tired of teaching that day and they start just like talking shit about whatever they want. Where it's kind of like, like uh, they'll they'll tell like a personal story or something like that, or they'll they'll kind of like turn their teacher brain off and just kind of treat everybody like humans. Um, I think you do that where it's like you are the authority, you are the teacher, you're talking about all this stuff, and then sometimes you'll just like invite people to you know give you restaurant recommendations where you're gonna be you know for the weekend. It's like yo, anyone know any cool golf courses like you know in Hawaii? Then someone's like, oh, yeah, I, I played this course a couple of years ago. It's amazing. And you're like, oh, yeah, that looks a lot like this. Like, you're just like, you're you're doing the community building where it's like, okay, like, we all love marketing. But, like, what else do we love here? Like, who of you love golfing? Who of you love, you know, you know, or who of you have kids? I think all that stuff is super important, too. I appreciate that. All right. So that was kind of more of, like, the, the broad content. So that was, that was awesome. So let's now talk about, like, the authoritative, kind of authority, authoritative content. So, you know, the second type of content you guys should all be creating is content that shows people that you're an undeniable expert in your field. So for me, that would be really e-commerce and marketing. For Mason, that would really be copywriting. And the way in which you create this, the things that you can kind of share is like your processes. Uh, what's your workflow? What are some of your client kind of success stories? You know, what are the lessons that you've learned, right? So you, you're probably going to get when you do post these types of content versus the broad, you're going to get less engagement on these posts. Um, but that's okay, right? The, the goal of these posts is not to reach everyone. The goal of these posts isn't to go far and wide. The goal really is to focus and kind of hone in on your ideal target audience. So for, for me, um, you know, I kind of have a couple things I'm looking at. I should have shared my screen, but I'm, I'm kind of looking at a couple of posts. So um, I'll go like really long form content in terms of like talking about how we help a client fix their email deliverability. Here are the five steps, right? They were experiencing low email deliverability because they were doing X, Y, and Z, right? They weren't segmenting, they were batching and blasting, and they weren't really sending content that was relevant, right? These were the three issues they were having. And the three ways in which we solved those were X, Y, and Z, right? We started with kind of a 90-day or 120-day engaged segment, and that means segmenting like this. Um, instead of batching and blasting, we started speaking to you know, specific audiences, uh, first-time buyers, repeat buyers, non-buyers, right? So really just kind of showing and almost subtly flexing kind of the expertise of like, here's the problem and here's the solution. Um, I've been kind of, I've done this in the past and I, I don't really like doing this now that I've realized this, but when I first started on social media, like four or five years ago, I would just post client testimonials and screenshots without any context, right? It kind of came off as braggy and here's all these results, but it wasn't really helpful. And then a few years ago, I'm just like, oh man, like this isn't that helpful. Like, sure, maybe it looks cool. Um, but I don't think there's like longevity in this type of approach. So I share way less screenshots now of client results. And I more just teach people and tell them how to do this. Um, and, and it's really actionable, authoritative content where for me to be able to talk about it, you know, I have to have done it. I've done it so many times now that I can do it in my sleep. So um, when you are sharing authoritative content, um, make sure that, yes, part of it's flexing and kind of showing your results. But the other part of it is really being sincere about adding value and being educational and teaching people. Um, and some people are going to work with you and others aren't, but I think the mission of all of us is how do we create content that helps everyone become better off? Like that is my sole purpose. And that's why, you know, we're doing these things, you know, these trainings and these teachings is we want people to learn and evolve and get better. So authoritative content is super, super important. Um, Mace, anything you want to hop in up there on? Yeah, I was going to, I was going to challenge the thing that you said about like just posting testimonials where you think it's like a little bit douchey or braggy. Okay. First of all, you should, if you're a. If you're an agency, I, I feel like you should be bragging about your, your product. I feel like that's probably the best thing to brag about. It's better than like, oh, like Q1 2020, like we, we crushed 2 million. You know what I mean? Like people don't really want to hear that. But I think like, outs okay, so if you keep the testimonials flowing and you don't really have a ton of context, there's going to be a ton of curiosity about like what it actually is that you're doing. I feel like there's, 
there's like the give, give, give approach that obviously does work where it's like, you can sort of just tell everyone everything and they'll end up coming to you anyway. Yeah. Um, if your stuff is really high level and it's stuff that they wouldn't do themselves. But like, I actually talked to an agency, like they almost signed me. I might still end up working with them at some point, but they were just posting screenshots of like someone who was at like 70,000 followers on Instagram one week and then four months later they're at like 250,000 it's like wait what did you get like what are you guys doing like how is this even possible and so like I feel like there's there's an element of that that makes people really sort of like put a halo on you the halo effect is something that you can't really teach and I was going to say this again about the authoritative content is like there are some people that just know so much about their thing that it's like they're just automatically put in the category of goat like for me, like I follow a lot of like self-help type people. Like it's it's less about like business stuff now. So I guess like you can maybe add something more about like maybe paid ads or, or, you know, email or something after. But when I think of like the people that I look up to on social media that have that like authority aura, I've talked to you about this guy, Brute DeForest before, where like he just has so much life experience and has lived so much and has done so much that every time he talks about life or like gives advice, it's stuff that I've never even come close to thinking of before. And so because he's so far ahead, like that's what makes me drawn to him. That's what makes me want to follow him and engage with his stuff all the time. Um, and that's what sort of like gives him a high level audience. If you want a really high level audience of like business owners that have money and they are in the market for email services, the more advanced the information you give, the better. Because like everyone kind of knows what a welcome flow is now. Everyone knows what abandoned checkout is. You know what I mean? Like you kind of changed the market with that. Like back in 2020, when you were talking about this stuff, no one really knew what that was. But now 5 million people from who, wherever have copied Chase Diamond's tweets and his ideas for the last four years. And now you are forced to compete with them and go even higher and higher and higher. And the market will sophisticate. But like if you're leading the market in sophistication, like if you're the most sophisticated, you're going to get all the money. And people can't copy that. Like you can't find that stuff on Google. You can only learn it through doing. I like that. I like that. That's really interesting. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're talking about the last type of content. Um, actually, I, and then I've got a bonus type of content that I think combines the three I'm talking about. Then let's talk about growth and then we'll field questions. So we'll probably go on another like 15, 20 minutes of like advice on kind of another types of content, how to actually grow, and then we'll field a bunch of questions. So by the way, it's crazy. Cool. We have 300 people live. It's, that's really cool. Um, that's super cool. And see some Oh, questions. really? Uh, 300 live on where? 300. Um, we have a bunch of people on Twitter. We've got a bunch of people on a YouTube. And, oh, this actually isn't even pulling the LinkedIn numbers. So we have 302 people live on YouTube and Twitter. Um, it's not pulling huh. LinkedIn. Wow, that's really All cool. All right, cool. Uh, okay. The last one is promotional posts, right? So the goal of the promotional posts is to sell your products and services. But again, you know, I'm I'm a big believer in you want to do it, you want to do it tastefully. Um, and really the easiest way to promote your business without looking like you're selling is providing value first and then making an ask. Um, so the ways in which you do this is I like doing this through case studies, through sharing some of the results and client stories. So again, kind of talking about the authoritative stuff, but doing it more in a way where it's like, Hey, this is what we do. We're open for business, but not sounding desperate or kind of, you know, coming across too salesy. Um, and, and then kind of like, again, breaking down how you got the results, right? Like really actionable content. And then mentioning, by the way, we can also do this for you. You know, at this point now, we've worked with hundreds of clients that are doing seven to nine figures in these categories. You've seen how we've done it. And by the way, you know, if you're looking for a best in class email partner, if you're looking for a best in class copywriter, if you're looking for a best in class, whatever it might be, um, you know, hit me in the DMs, send me an email, you know, fill out this thing, right? So having different types of call to actions around your content um, is super important. And Again, you're going to get lower reach and engagement on these things, but it doesn't matter. You're not looking for reach. You're looking to reach the right people and to get clients. Um, so that's kind of how I think about it. And basically one example that I can share that, you know, I have pulled up is I kind of came up with this philosophy on like how I think about um, brands building out like their internal team and, you know, how agencies to build like their internal team as well for kind of email marketing. Um, and for like the internal side, um, basically it's like, I call it like the, the core four. So, you know, you should have an email marketer, a designer, a copywriter, right? And then some kind of, you know, developer, if you can really build it out. Maybe you just need the three, maybe you don't need a developer, but ideally you have the four. And then I break down like, you know, which 
each role does, you know, how, what kind of experience they should have, what tools they should know, you know, what types of things and KPIs they should be looking for. So I put down like almost like this Bible of like building out your internal team for e-commerce brands. Um, and it's a lot and it is overwhelming. So I'll put it at the very end of that and say, by the way, you know, we've worked with hundreds of brands that want to do this, but can't do it, don't have the budget, don't have the know-how, don't have the time. So if you want to do all these things, but you want us to do it and consolidate it for you, you know, hit me up. And this post drove a ton of business. Um, basically, before talking about the fourth one, you want to hop in here? Yeah. So there, there's a couple ways to sell without selling. You had a, fin a fantastic Alex Man box last Friday. <laughs> Whoever wrote that is great. Whoever Alex is, man, this kid really knows his stuff. So um, if anyone's on Alex in my inbox, they probably know what we're talking about here. But Alex said um, so about the, the selling, like selling by example, instead of leading by example, you're selling by example, talking about the dream state. So it depends on like kind of what you're selling. Um, but like, you can just talk about all the benefits of the product as if they're happening to you and people will kind of want to latch onto that and they'll DM you and try and learn more. So like, if you have an agency, I don't know, this might be a little bit different, but like the example that Alex used was like, if you're a day trader and you make a bunch of money, um, you can talk about how great your life is because of how much money you make from day trading. And like a lot of times you will get people that come through, um, asking to learn and then can be sold whatever course you want to do or whatever you're selling i've had i haven't done this directly because i i don't really sell on twitter but students of mine have done this on my behalf kind of i've actually ghostwritten the tweets and it's the same sort of thing where it's just like you know uh, this is a, is a simplified version of it but it's basically like look at the car look at the watch look how you know how free i am how much free time i have like this is amazing copywriting is amazing dm 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 set 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 sell 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 so you have that um, and it's like, again, less salesy, but still very much promotional because people want to basically be you. And that's the whole reason of having a personal brand. And then the second example I had was I had a friend of mine who's launching an agency and he wanted to do like this big, long tweet to like announce the agency launch. And it was like, it started with like a siren emoji, siren emoji, big news, something major is coming with the eyeballs emoji. And this whole, basically like a press release, like, here's what we're going to do for you. Um, over the past two years, me and my partner have gotten 350 million views working with brands on TikTok. Now we're putting everything we've learned together to help to, to explode their TikTok presence with proven viral public. So he was like, yo, can you basically, like, what would you change about this? It was like a thousand words. Long. And wow. I, I shortened it to, it wasn't a thousand, but it was, it, it was long. Um, and I put over the past two years, my partner and I have gotten 350 million views working with brands on TikTok. So I kept that part, but I said, we basically have a red button that we can press anytime we want to make an e-com brand go viral and we can press it for you. If you're a brand owner, DM me and I can tell you how it works. This ended up crushing for him, my rewrite, because you're saying less and all you're asking is for a DM, all you're asking is for a conversation. And you just have one line in there that talks about like how powerful your tool is without overselling it. The first thing was kind of overselling. It was just like giving away the entire thing, like telling people way too much information. Um, you can literally just go like, I've got an X result. Um, it's given me benefit. If you want benefit, DM me. That's like super not promotional, but that's more than enough for people to go and pursue a deal with you if they want to do it. Love that. Dude, that's sick. Um, and then the last one we're going to talk about on the content side is, um, in my mind, one that kind of combines all of them and I'm calling it engagement bait. You know, we've all seen it on Twitter. We've all seen it on, you know, LinkedIn. Um, maybe it's even other places as well. But essentially what it is, is you'll create a resource or a lead magnet that you make people engaged to receive. So comment X, Y, and Z, you know, like, repost, you know, follow, whatever it might be. Um, and what I like about this post is I like it because it combines three previous things that we mentioned. You know, it's broad in the sense that, you know, if it's the right lead magnet, it can go viral. It's authoritative in the sense that the content should be focused around your core expertise. And then it's promotional in the sense that it attracts hopefully the potential customers or clients and done correctly. Uh, you can capture a lot of email addresses as well. So, you know, I've probably done this a few dozen times now and I've acquired probably something like 20 to 30,000 email addresses from running these types of things. Um, they're super effective. So I actually even did this, um, Mason, I sent this to you, but I actually even did this for like my course launch and I was pretty surprised how it worked, but basically said like, Hey, 
I'm deleting this in 30 minutes. Um, let's make a deal, you know, whatever, whatever. If you want a discount, comment this. And dude, like on LinkedIn, like within 30 minutes, I had 220 comments. And I did this on Twitter as well. And I sold dozens and dozens of copies of this course by just getting people to basically comment saying that they wanted a discount. So that worked really, really great for direct selling. Um, and this could work really, really great as well for having a lead magnet. So for me, it might be something like what I mentioned before. Hey, e-commerce brands, I put together the master playbook on how you should build out your internal team. I talk about my core four rules and whatever, whatever. If you want this, hit retweet and comment access. And right, because each person engages and comments, it then kind of helps their circle and their network see it, which helps basically like the ripple effect. So some of these posts, if done right, can kind of go on for forever and get tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, actually even millions of, of views and you know, hundreds or thousands of engagements. So it's, it's pretty wild. Mm -hmm. I remember those were really big. I remember those being a thing like two years ago. I haven't seen as many recently. I don't know if people stopped doing it or if Twitter's not really pushing it anymore. Are you seeing the same success with those now? So Twitter, you're right. Like I feel like, yeah, two, three years ago, however long it was, like that was the thing. That just made its way over to LinkedIn probably in the past six months. So what I like about LinkedIn is like all this stuff that like everyone that's crushing on other platforms is doing, just bring your strategies to LinkedIn. Like um, it's a little bit less sophisticated in terms of like people are trying to game it less, which means like the people that know how to game it probably can game it better. So I think like what used to work on Twitter was, was this whole thing. And I think it still does work. I still do see some of them. You know, to your point, I see less. But now on LinkedIn, like, right, you could get hundreds or thousands of comments. One of my clients, um, I, I think he had the most I've ever seen. He had like 12,000 comments. It was insane. Wow. Yeah, I mean, my engagement bait is a lot different. <laughs> I've had two in the last 30 days that were pretty ridiculous. One was about spicy food and one was about how you can like find a, a wife as an Indian man. Oh man. I don't really um, want to hear about cows. Well, yeah. Um, but I mean, they were both like ideas that I thought were good that were just slightly controversial. Um, that like, you know, people just went nuts over. So like, don't do that. Do what Chase is talking about. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, cool. So the last thing I want to say on the content side, right, is in terms of the frequency of content, right? Like we've, we've gone through a lot. Um, the majority of your posts should be broad or authoritative. So think of it like this, 80% of your posts should be, you know, some sort of value. And then 20% of your posts should be some kind of selling or engagement based. So if you're posting five times a week, you know, four of the five should be hardcore focused on value. And then one should be promotional, right? So the pattern here is give, 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 right? Give tons of value and then ask, right? That's kind of the format I follow. Do you, do you follow a simple, a simple or a similar kind of format to that? I really don't, man. Um, I like I really just kind of tweet from the heart most of the time because I I don't rely on Twitter as like a, a traffic source. So um, and I also kind of like rarely use it. But I remember like I was always afraid to promote. So like the it was basically just like value, 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 never selling. Um, but I think like knowing what I know now and after seeing like you have some success, like I think it's just as long as people understand that like you shouldn't be afraid of selling, yeah. like you should you should want your audience to want to buy stuff, which they probably do. Like they're waiting for you to sell something. Go with it, go with that mindset. But I don't really have like a trick like schedule like that. For sure. All right, dude, let's, let's kind of quickly talk about distribution and then we'll take questions. Um, this has been great. This is really cool to see almost 400 people live with us on Twitter and YouTube. Um, all right, so distribution. For whatever reason, most people ignore this or don't understand this. This is the most important step to make sure that your content's actually stated. We've talked about types of content to create, whatever. It doesn't matter if people aren't seeing it. So, you know, this sounds simple, but the easiest way to get more comments on your post is to comment on other people's posts. So I'm gonna say that one more time just because like, you know, whenever I tell people that advice, they're like, oh my God, like, duh. Like the easiest way to get more comments on your own post is to comment on other people's posts. So this takes kind of three sh shapes and forms. One is when people do comment on your stuff, try your best to reply. I'm good at this sometimes. I'm really bad at other times. It's something I want to get better at. It's just hard, um, you know, to do all the time. But if you can, reply to your own comments. And with that, try to comment on other people's posts that are commenting on yours, right? Share, share the love. Number two is make a list of like 10 or 15 of your peers that post regular content, post good content that you can comment on. 
And then make sure when you're commenting, you're adding value. Don't say great pubs. You know, give some context, give something of value. The, the more valuable the comment, the better it's going to be. If you're commenting just to comment, it's not going to really work. And then comment mm -hmm. on your ICP, right? So comment on the posts of your dream clients. Add value, ask questions, um, you know, be engaging. And when you do that, right, you comment on, let's say, 10 or 15 or 20 of your dream clients' posts for a couple of weeks, and then you approach them in the DMs, consciously or subconsciously, they're going to know you and appreciate you because you're showing love and you're adding value. Um, there were too many people that are trying to get clients. Uh, they might come at once or they might not come at all and they'll just go straight to the DMs to try to pitch and it doesn't work. So that's that. Um, the other thing too is like be intentional. Try to set up comment and trades um, with friends and coworkers. So you know, maybe if Mason and I are both hopping on Twitter for the first time or if we're both already posting on Twitter, um, it's like, hey, we're friends. We're already working together. Will you comment on my post? I'll comment on yours. We'll add value. We're not going to be tacky. Doing those types of things a, it keeps you accountable because if you know people are going to be commenting on your stuff or looking for your post to comment on, you're going to post. And then B, it helps their audience kind of get access to your post and vice versa. Like every comment almost is like a mini billboard or advertisement from those people where a percentage of their folks are going to actually see your stuff. Bro, exactly. I'm okay. I, this has always been my thing. I realized this luckily early on that like the best thing you can get to grow is a cosign. Like I had, um, back in the day, I don't know if you know, Lawrence King. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. The stuff. And then like, when I started working with you, like you would comment on my stuff and that was always huge for growth, which I, which is by the way, not a plug, but part of the reason why you're like, your product is so good is because like, you're literally getting a cosign it like, yes, it boosts impressions, but it's also like chase diamond comments in your <laughs> chase diamond comments on your post. And so I think that's why that's that's a, a huge like solution. I know you got the the ghostwriting thing too, so you kind of got like everything cranking. But um, I think like yeah, if you can get people to like if you can engage with big creators and get them to sort of like know who you are, and then they comment on your stuff, like that just pushes you everywhere. That's how you actually grow really fast. Yeah, dude, that's how I grew too on on Twitter. Um, I don't know four or five years ago. The guys that started um, Cool Tia Marco, what's uh, Kill Crew? Is that the, the brand? Yeah, the Kill Crew guys. Yeah. Uh, they put me on to Twitter. They're like, dude, you got to do this. We're going viral left and right. Um, so I started posting about like email deliverability and email marketing, and they engaged. And dude, I think like the very first time they engaged, I got like 100 followers. And then I posted like every day for a week because I was obsessed. And by the end of the first week, I had like 1,000 followers. So I just really saw like the power of getting, uh, you, you basically want people that are, at your size and above your size to engage with you, whether you pay them or you trade with them or whatever the, the barter or the agreement is. That's super important. Um, I, I would say that a comment is probably even worth more than a retweet. Um, and then a quote is really good too. But like you see a lot of these accounts that are just like retweet bots where it's like they have somehow quarter million followers on Twitter or something like that. And all they do is just repost other people's content. They don't even have their own stuff. That like cheapens them, but a comment, it doesn't take anything away from their feed. It's not like they're like, you know, making their, like, it's just like other people's tweets on their feed. Um, it's like one plus one equals five. Like it adds way more value than just a retweet. So a comment from someone who's famous or popping on, on your platform is, is super important. Heck yeah. Dude, this was fantastic. Um, about four or five minutes of content and value. Uh, let's do, I've got a call in about 15 minutes. Let's do about 10, 15 minutes of Q&A. Uh, well, well, I guess first off, let us know in the comment section, was this helpful? Should we do more of these? And second, drop some questions. We'll try to answer as many as we can in the next you know, 10, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. I saw this one right here. Cardinal's my teacher. She has no idea how much I'm learning from her. I super appreciate that. That's dope. Uh, Sick. Shout out, Felix. Um, we, him, and, <clears throat> him and I go way back from you know why um sadia uh actually just joined in a circle this morning pretty sure really amazing yeah all right let's let's um, get some questions by the way dude um pretty cool to see how many people were, were live throughout this like i can only see youtube and twitter but we're at 442 right now and then doesn't include linkedin so maybe, maybe we actually have questions already let's see i'm gonna go to linkedin real quick to see if there's any questions Felix goes, how do you guys manage the hundreds of DMs you guys receive? If you want to start really, with that, go for it. I don't really get up like that many DMs. I, I, I get a lot of pitches, but I just ignore those. <laughs> um, 
I mean, like you could have a setter in there if it's for business. I mean, on Instagram, yeah, I get thousands of DMs a, a week and I have a setter in there and I have many chat as well. I know many chats really good for, for Instagram and Facebook. I don't know if there's like one for Twitter or LinkedIn. Is there like a DM automation tool? I'm super scared to use automation on LinkedIn. So whenever I do like the comment post or people reach out, it's always manual, which is kind of a pain. I'm, I'm kind of scared to using automation on, on LinkedIn. On on Instagram or, or Facebook or whatever you're using, how do you use ManyChat? It links to your thing. It just basically shows all of your DMs in a like in their interface. But then you can um, you can like tag people like if they're in a certain like position in the pipeline. You can see like it's just a more organized way to look at it. And you can set up automation. So if someone uses a keyword like copy, if someone DMs me copy. There's an, a message that will go out to sort of like mark the conversation, and Got then. It either me or my setter will hop in there and just like manually go back and forth. Guys, so you're using a chat almost as if, if like it's a shared inbox between you and your team to kind of, like, like a shared inbox slash CRM to manage all the inbound outbound? That's right. Okay, interesting, cool. Um, yeah, I guess for me, like I get a lot of DMs in, in emails. Um, if it's something that I can respond to quickly, I will. If it's a pitch, if it's a good pitch, I'll kind of entertain it. If it's a bad pitch, I'll typically just delete it. Um, it's it's hard though because there's so many platforms, right, that you post on, and it's like you see it and then you forget. So I, I try to be good, but it I don't have a good solution. It's hard. I, I guess the best way probably would be Mason getting a team member in, like you do on ManyChat, across all the inboxes. I don't know if there's like a platform that that kind of aggregates all of them, uh, but that'd be uh -huh. great to have a team member kind of help respond because people have questions that like. I've answered a million times. It'd be great for almost them to almost have like a list of FAQs where they could answer the question that I've already answered for someone else. Like that would be cool. Yeah. I don't know. Like, do you get a lot of Twitter DMs? I'd say Twitter, I probably get like, depending on the day, five to seven DMs. Same. Yeah. And so like both of us are pretty up there um, in terms of followers. And like, yeah, I, I probably get like three or four pitches a day and then maybe someone saying something nice, but. I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't worry too much. And like, if there's also, don't even worry about hiring someone unless you know there's money in there. So, like, if you have a a, a product or something that you're trying to sell via Twitter, or you have an agency service or something, don't worry about it. Just like ignore everybody. For sure. um, someone says tips to grow on Twitter as a first year entrepreneur, without, and I guess you got cut off there, but I guess in general, Chase, like tips for growing when you don't have authority. Yeah, I think like the I think like well, I think a couple of things. Like, I think there's tips for growth. I think there's tips for clients. Um, one of my favorite tips, um, to get clients is basically what I'm calling like, I don't know the best way to describe it, but essentially like on every day on Twitter, on LinkedIn, etc., people are always looking for recommendations of freelancers, agencies, people to hire. So I would like be intentional of like looking on your feed, like of those people asking questions, and either a respond to that. You know, if you're responding yourself and kind of vouching for yourself, that's maybe worth one point. However, if you can find like a coworker or a friend or a family member that can kind of vouch for you and kind of speak to you, that's probably worth like three or five points. So like in terms of like reaching out to folks on social to kind of like land clients, regardless of your following size, that's a great way to do it. Like getting clients through social comments. Um, you do need your profile to be optimized. You probably do need to be sharing some kind of ongoing co content. Um, but to answer the question, like, how do you actually grow? I think we've kind of talked about that a little bit what, around, like, making sure that you can trade with people or pay people or, you know, whatever it might be to comments and like and engage with your stuff. Like, you know, I think that's like the, you're going to grow if you really kind of hack at it for a long time, you'll grow slowly. But if you really want to expedite your growth, you really do have to have certain people that you pay or you negotiate or you trade with engaging with your stuff. I wish it wasn't the case that that's just the reality of it. That's just my opinion, specifically on Twitter or LinkedIn. You need people that have audiences to co-sign you, like Mason said, and the co-sign is done through likes, comments, bookmarks, and retweets. Mm -hmm. I would say, okay, so I mean, I'm a relatively new entrepreneur. Like I'm newer to this than Chase is. And when I started Twitter, it was like April of 2020 before I had any clients or any real knowledge of like what copywriting was. And that was like kind of my, my first thing. Um, and like, you don't have to use Twitter to get clients or to sell something 
or to build an audience of, of people that, you know, want to learn something from you. It doesn't have to be that way. You can just like hop on Twitter and just be good vibes. My first tweets were kind of about copywriting. It was kind of about the journey, but I was never saying like, follow me to, you know, watch me blow up. Like it wasn't about that. Like you can just be on Twitter and just be a user and just like watch the way people are, you know, tweeting and, and learn stuff from them. Like I was in silence for like a year and a half with the Cardinal Mason account before I even ever tweeted anything about copywriting. You don't have to like teach people anything if you don't know stuff. And that's actually one of the worst things about Twitter is that you have people that have been like doing something for two months and they think they're an expert and then they just start like tweeting as if they're Chase Diamond. It's like, you're not Chase Diamond, man. I'm sorry. It's not, it's not the way it is. So um, like, yeah, engage with people, um, hype people up, just be known as like a cool person online the same way that, you know, if, if you were to go to like an MMA gym, you don't have to like, you know, if, if it's your second class, you don't have to like go and start teaching like sweeps and, you know, leg locks and stuff like that. You can just show up, hype everyone up, make them feel good about what they're doing. Um, people will root for you and you root for them. And it's just a, a good, just be a part of the community, you know? Heck yeah. Should we try to answer one or two more? Should we wrap there? Yeah, let's try and speed run these. So someone's, someone said, I'm torn between catering to old grandpas and 18 year olds, I guess on LinkedIn. How do you balance the language you use? Um, I mean, I guess the, the right answer is be yourself, right? Cause I don't know, Chase might tweet like a, or like sort of like a tech bro. But if I were to sort of copy Chase's style on LinkedIn, like I would not do that. I would, I would tweet or post like me. I would talk like me. Cause that's why people are going to follow you. Don't like start by trying to be somebody else. It's not going to work. Yeah. It's impossible to sustain, right? You might be able to do it for a few posts, but over a long period of time, you can't sustain that. Yeah. Um, Okay, easy. What do you think about the concept of selling streetwear, clothing, brand items as an entry ticket to educational digital community? Are you the guy that was edging earlier? Um, okay, so you're talking about like people buy a shirt and then they learn how to do dropshipping? Um, not sure if that's super relevant here. Chase, is there anything you see in there that could be answered? Uh, let me find it. Uh, we think that currently sell streetwear brand items as entry ticket to a digital. Huh. I'm. I don't know. I have to think about that one. How to sell that digital material? I've never really thought about that. I mean, I guess potentially inside the community, maybe if people were a certain tier, they can get streetwear. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I would sell streetwear to then get people to buy it. a community. It probably would do the community if the community is like the end goal, and then have merch that you send or sell within the community is probably what what i would do yeah and then chase you got a really nice message here i learn every day from you can't thank you enough awesome. he wants you to accept his connection request okay i'll check that out after thank you all right. um all right chase i does that wrap it yeah that was great uh if we should do more of these let us know we mason and i record every tuesday at the same time we would typically just record us but we wanted to do it live to answer some questions and be more engaging so if you, have, if you guys like this, let us know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. We got Miles here. What's up, Miles? Love oh, Miles, man. man. That like button. Yeah, make sure you guys like and engage with kind of the posts that we put out. We put them out on the YouTube channel, um, in a podcast channel, and it's basically the Diamond Download by myself, Chase Diamond, and my co-host, Cardinal Mason. So, um, yeah, hopefully this was helpful. Yep. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for allowing us into your homes. Uh, so long for now. We'll see you next week. Cheers, everyone. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you.